And I gotta get you guys' opinion about the new Drizzy Drake for the one time, but honestly, never mind. I don't wanna hear your thoughts because they probably you probably mad. Everybody hating on the album. I don't understand, man. It's a vibe. It reminds me a lot of more life. All right, man. So as we're gearing up for this year, I know a lot of releases are coming out. People are excited for a lot of things. And the shoe that I'm looking for absolutely the most easily has to be the Air Jordan 1 Chicago. Uh, they are doing a remastered version. This pair is from 2015, but I wanted to do an updated review because clearly, you know, we're in 2022. So let's drop that 4K quick review of the Air Jordan 1 Chicago. And we'll talk about the remastered pair because I think it's really interesting the way they're doing things with that. First and foremost, I wanna let you guys know today's video is sponsored by Secret Sauce, but I'll let you guys know about that later. Now, hands down, bro, period, I would say the Chicago, and I'm sure you would agree with me, is the most iconic sneaker a lot of inspiration comes from this shoe uh, we know michael jordan didn't originally play in these in 85 he actually had the airships on the documentary where he talks about actually wearing the jordan one or even the airship his feet were literally bleeding and it makes complete sense you know wearing these all day your feet be hollering and i just can't imagine actually hooping in these and personally i haven't even been really wearing high top jordan ones recently i've been more going to my travis scott lows the fragments that's like my everyday shoe i typically switch off between those some yeezy slides and some zero shoes that i picked up for my knee and they're just a really nice training everyday shoe and that's kind of been like my go-to now when it comes to just being completely fresh in my opinion you gotta wear a chicago one just like it's just such a versatile sneaker and yes there are so many colorways but nothing beats the ogs my top list would definitely have to we'll just go with the top two it would be the chicago ones and the royal ones period you know what i think i know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna I'll drop a video for you guys about my top jordan ones of all time stay tuned now in the intro i hit you guys with a quick little unboxing of the shoes and what I thought personally the box is most likely going to look like when they come out this year. I use my Georgetown one box, but I truly just feel like with this remastered pair, of course, they are doing it a little different. Everybody just wants the original Chicago's and I know with Nike, they're probably going to do the whole supply and demand, 100,000 pairs and people are going to be trying to hype them up left and right. Resale is going to be insane off the bat. So just be prepared for that. And I know that is just a really annoying thing about the sneaker game, but at this point, it's, there's, there's no reason to complain. We can't complain, bro. It is what it is. It's never going to change. That's where I will mention Secret Sauce, man. If you guys don't know what Secret Sauce is, it is an online, basically group, a cook group, a community of sneakerheads and not just sneakerheads, people that want to resell. There's people that want to make money and there's people that just want personal pairs. There's nothing wrong with that. Do you? Secret Sauce is dope just based on the fact that you can get early links, you can get access to bots, less L's, leaks on different information that's super vital. They are diving into like crypto and NFT. We know that's down the drain right now, but hey bro, now's the time to really double down and invest because this is what the millionaires are made in that bear market. Personally been able to cop hella sneakers through Secret Sauce. You guys can check it out. There still should be some spots available in my link down below in the description. So go check it out, man. I personally think it's worth it. It does suck that it's just like not that easy to get these sneakers, man. And with these Jordan 1s, when they do come out, I'll tell you, man, be a part of every group you can. Watch every YouTube video you can. Get all the leak information. I think the, the main benefit with like any of these groups or networking on YouTube or Twitter or Instagram is the fact that once you build that network, it's pretty easy to get shoes. I know I'm gonna get these for sure. I'm probably gonna have to pay premium. I'm not gonna have to pay like extreme resale. You know what I'm saying? And that's just through network. On top of the fact that they're gonna be most likely raffled at tons of different stores, so enter every raffle you possibly can. And the sad part about it is you still will probably take an L because they're gonna be that limited, supposedly. Man, I'm just speaking on speculation and what I've read up on, who knows? There could be huge GR for all I know, but the way Jordan brand moves, man, psh, I, I just can't see it. Now this pair that dropped in 2015 released at $160 retail, and I remember I actually paid retail for these, and it's insane, it really hurts me and just like, uh, makes me cringe to the core. To know that if you try to pick these up now, they are smooth, gonna run you. A used pair, probably $800, and a brand new pair is hitting you anywhere from like 15 to two bands, bro. $2,000 for these. What have we come to? I remember the days where like the Yeezy 2 was $2,000, and you know, that was like extremely limited. These were a GR. It's crazy now how much the sneaker game has progressed in the last few years, going from 2015 through, I would say, it seemed like everyone caught on to sneakers. Like, no matter where you go, someone has like a fresh pair of kicks. They might not know what they are, but they're they're aware of the sense of like, oh, sneakers are cool now. You know, they weren't really like hardcore in it like we've been, but hey, sneakers have just somehow become this more world-like renowned 
ordeal like I remember going over to London and they weren't really like crazy about trainers what they call them over there they were more about like fashion you know they had their simple like Air Forces or Timberlands nothing crazy now you probably go there everybody got off-white ones or some crazy Nike collab or Puma or they're wearing some special New Balance it's absolutely like just insane to me but also pretty cool to know that the sneaker game's not nowhere near dead you know a lot of people will say oh i'm tired of sneakers blah blah at the end of the day man this is a piece of art there's just so much fun to it sneaker culture will never die if anything it'll just constantly keep recycling itself you know there might come down to a day where we see jordan's not selling out and then the recycle goes again it seems like people only want things when they're limited whenever you have full access to something if these were just sitting on the shelves like they were and i wouldn't say 2015 but like a lot of Jordan ones were in 2017, 2016. People didn't want them. But then as soon as everybody was like, oh, I like Jordans, oh, I want some Jordans, they're sold out everywhere. Now everybody wants them. Prices go up, supply and demand, that's the game. Now I wanna say the Chicago's have the best color blocking of all time with that white, varsity red, the black. It just looks so clean and goes with so many different outfits. And what I'm really interested to see with the 2022 pair, because based on this 2015 pair, the leather was just butter. Uh, you guys can see the toe box. The way it just, oh, bro. They don't make them like this, man. They do not make them like this. And, and I have the Georgetown High 85, and I just don't like the leather on those. Same goes with like the neutral gray. I love the colorway, but for some reason, all the 85 pairs, when they're doing them remastered, I get they're using like the same materials, uh, same toe box, blah, 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 all that good stuff. But the shoes run a lot more narrow than just their other general releases that weren't remastered. So I've kind of had to go with like a 12 and a half on those and that's even harder to get. But with any of the retros that they released, they were all really true to size. So I personally would just stick to that. Based on the images that I saw from the reimagined pair, I personally, as of now, until I get to see them in hand, I do not think that the quality will be better than the 2015 pair. I don't even think it'll come close. Again, that's just me speculating just on the images I've seen. This retailed at $160. These are reimagined pair are gonna release at $180. So if the quality isn't better than these, it's a damn sad day, y'all, let me tell you. And I know it's something that we just kind of can't be like surprised at, but it's like, but at what point do we decide as like a community the whole Nike and Jordan brand like to higher standards and quality it'll never happen because the shoes keep selling out but you get what I'm saying people get mad about resale and everything going on supply and demand but at the end of the day if everyone just stopped buying and stopped paying resale it wouldn't be an issue so we really can't be mad at anyone but ourselves these Chicago's look amazing on feet if there was one request that I could make between now and even next year 2023 I would love to see some Chicago one lows or even like a Travis Scott fragment mixed with like the Chicago colorway. I think that would be super fire. And I'm not just saying that in terms of the collaboration and the backward swoosh and the hype really. I'm saying that just because I love my fragments. When I compare my fragments to my neutral gray Jordan 1 lows, there's a big quality difference as well as in terms of comfort. It just doesn't hit the same. Like there's something about those fragments that they did. I don't know if it's the inner lining or the mesh on the inside, the padding. It's just so much more comfortable than my neutral gray Jordan 1s and I, I, I don't know why. But if they could release a Chicago low, man, let me tell you, I would be all over it. But there you guys have it, man. That is my review for the day. What do you guys think? What is your favorite Air Jordan 1? Like, what retro is literally your holy grail? Drop it down below in the comments. And also, if you're into Jordan 1 lows, what colorway would you like to see? This is your boy, Sneaker Life Man. If you guys could do me a huge favor, like this video, make sure to check out Secret Sauce. Oh, and real quick, if anybody wants to pick up the new merch, got the Space Jam tees on deck, you guys can go to sneakerlife.com. I'll put the links down below. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Run it.